I have done a presentation on ColourPop and what ColourPop is and why it's useful, why it was made. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about what my use case was for it and why it's important to use it and how to use it, like when it's the correct time to use it, which is really all the time. Um, so let's go over, let's see. So this is a design that I drew a long time ago. It's a Corvette. This in Hue Forge would be a very big pain in the butt to try to get the colors separated. And when I mean color separated, I mean the Corvette to look one way and then the background to look uh, a different way. Hue Forge originally did not come with a color pop mode. And we used to have to split the images into two completely separate images like this. So you would have to go into a photo editor and you would have to separate out the Corvette from the actual image and then you'd have to Hue Forge this whole image Hue Forge this whole image, and then your slicer, you would combine those two STLs to give you the color separation that you would need. Um, I'll show you an example. Uh, so right now in Hue Forge, we're in standard, standard brightness comp, standard everything. Um, this is a beautiful rose with a black and white background. So in standard mode, you cannot get these colors to separate. So I'm going to turn this gray off. Um, and then we have this blue gray here. We'll throw in this red. So you can see here, it's going to be nearly impossible to separate just the red on the top from everything else, from the black and white in the background. So a good way to deal with this problem is we go into color pop mode. And what color pop mode is trying to do is it's going to look at the luminance value of the background. So it's going to look for these black and white areas and then it's also going to look for the RGB values of this red area. And then it's going to actually make two, two hue forges essentially and stack them on top of each other. So let's go ahead and look at that. We will go into color pop. Now, in this menu it looks a little wonky from standard, right? So in the middle we have our color core and we have this uh, bold white line. Now this bold white line is where the image is going to separate and make those two hue forges. So you can think of down here this is your um, bottom hue forge and then up here this is your top hue forge. So <clears throat> to start we also have this bar over here. This controls where that separation is going to is going to happen. So if you needed more room on the bottom or on the top to get the depth that you want out of your image over here, you can play around with this slider here. And then we also have um, this tolerance slider. And this will be important later on, but it basically is just how well um, the program is going to define the grayscale. So let's go ahead and we'll split this up. Like I said, this is like two hue forges. We're going to need a base layer, which is our black and then we will need a white layer as our top layer for this this first hue forge area here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this red slider off so that you can see kind of what I'm doing here. So we'll get the other black in here and we'll bring that up. So now you can see that we have started the second hue forge here and it's starting to give it a little bit of depth. So it's separated from the grayscale in the background. So now that we want, now that we have a little bit of depth here, we're going to add this red in and we'll bring it all the way up into the top part. And as simple as that, we've got a pretty good hue forge um, that's matching what's going on over here in our original image. Now, you can see these little white spots itself. So shaders have been updated. I totally forgot about this. The shaders have been updated so that you can actually see what it'll look like on the edges of your 3D print whenever you go to print it. So this is actually what um, whenever, like I said, it's two hue forges stacked on each other, right? So the background is one hue forge and then this red rose is a second hue forge. So you'll see the layer lines. If you've ever printed a hue forge before, you'll see on the side of the hue forge all of the different um, stripes of where you did swap by layer. So that's what this is showing here. So you'll see that <clears throat> in your print view. So 
as I said, the tolerance slider, if we turn this all the way down, you can see that I just want to show exactly how it's or what it's doing. You can see these edges around here. Um, it's not quite just sticking to the, the red rose petals. Um, so you would mess with the slider and just try to get it as smooth as possible to where you want it so that it cleans up these edges and um, all of that. Now extra gap. Extra gap is for you can see here that you've got a little bit of problems when it when you don't have that extra gap. So we add it in just so that it's rebasing what's going on here in the colored area. Another thing is with Hue Forge in general, if you want more detail, like this is a very detailed image and you can see this is not as detailed, you can bring your layer heights down to a 0 0.04 and get a little bit more detail. So we can get away with like 0.2 for our base layer. That way we're not printing, um, it cuts down on time. Not by a lot, not like drastically, but it does cut down on time when you bring up the base layer. Um, I think you can get away with like what a 0.24 base layer with a 0.4 nozzle. Like I said with the Corvette, we had to separate that image into two to get um, to get the color separation that I needed. So this is what the finished product looked like, and this is literally. Like I said, the two Hue Forges stacked on each other. Now we can use color pot mode. As long as we grayscale the background image or grayscale the front, we'll do like we did before. We'll turn all these off. We'll go ahead and get our base set for the the uh, both of the Hue Forges. So we'll bring in another white. We'll bring in another black. Bring this all the way up. Bring this all the way up to the top. And there we go. Okay, so so here you can kind of see what's going on a little bit. You've got the separation of the Corvette. The Corvette is actually sitting taller than the, the background itself. And this is where if you bring it into Photoshop or another image editor, you can really play around with the different colors in your model because as you can see this is white and gray in the uh, original image. And that can lead to some issues whenever you're hue forging. It's better to get like a drastic difference. So that I should have changed the color of the wheels because Color Pop is taking this and it, it thinks that it is part of the background on this image. So that's my bad. But for just today's examples, you can see that you can really throw whatever you want in the background. So if you have a two color image where you need just the separation between two separate colors, it's a lot easier to use color pop than it is to use color aware um, when you're first starting out. So if this image is red and this is blue, then you would just you know grayscale the background and then you're good to go for separation. If that makes sense. But I would say that that looks pretty good. So that's all I've got for color pop. Um, I know Silverback was talking about he was having issues separating. Um, this is a really good way to kind of dip your feet into color separation and color aware. Color aware is just taking, it's it's essentially three hue forges stacked on each other, whereas color pops the two hue forges stacked on each other. So we like to say that, you know, you start with standard, you play around with standard, and then you move on to color pop and then color aware. Um, that's just a natural progression. So like I said, that's all I have for ColourPop. Um, this was kind of a rough edit. Uh, I kind of had to cut out a bunch of like little questions and little things that I was saying to people in the Polymaker Discord. These presentations are done over there. Uh, I answer questions while I'm presenting every Friday night at around 7 p.m. Central. Um, if you want to come join and come hang out, there are other presentations that happen all the time. Just about every night there's a presentation over there, somebody hanging out in that Discord. Um, very friendly group of people. But if you'd like to support me in the future, you can subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading more of these in the future. They might be a little rough to begin with, but I'm trying to get used to it. Trying to get used to recording again. And uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. I will have a link to Polymaker's Discord in the description. And I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you. So thank you.